Hi, I'm Brian Simmons. I'm going to show you how to turn uh, the components for this cake stand. Uh, pretty simple. There's kind of a bowl project and uh, then a little spindle project. Put them together and get a nice little cake stand. Um, pretty basic techniques though. We're going to start out with a block of maple. We're using quilted maple for this. I've bandsawed this round already. Uh, about seven and a half inches in diameter. Drilled a hole in the center for my screw center. Um, then I'm going to mount my chuck, four jaw, self-centering chuck onto the lathe. Install a screw center into the chuck. And then in a project like this where the hole is pretty shallow, you can actually shorten up the screw center by making just a simple little spacer. Just a, this happens to be a piece of masonite. You can make them out of uh, plywood, just drill a little hole in it. You can even leave them square if you want to. And uh, just shortens up the length of that screw a little bit as long as it's a good flat surface. And then thread the blank onto the screw chuck. make sure that it's tight up against the face of the jaws. And with that, we'll begin by turning what will become the bottom side of the base. Always rotate your lathe by hand. Make sure it's going to clear the tool rest before beginning. We'll be turning this base at about 1,000, 1,500 RPMs. Begin by using a fingernail ground bowl gouge. We just want to clean up the bottom side of the blank, make it smooth, slightly concave so it sits nicely on the table. Just use the wing of the bowl gouge and draw it back across the piece. feeling pretty good. Use a straight edge just to check your progress on the bottom. It's just slightly concave. That's exactly what we're looking for. It's a good smooth surface. Now we'll make a recess to hold this in the four jaw chuck. Chuck I'm using is going to require a recess about two and a half inches in diameter. I just use a pair of calipers to mark that. And the dimension on this isn't critical. I'll mark that with a pencil to see the line a little bit better. And then I'll use a square nose scraper to produce a recess about 3 16ths of an inch deep out to that pencil line. So begin by cutting at center. Cut to your final depth. Then adjust your tool rest slightly above center. And make the rest of the recess. Just make small cuts. Taking about an eighth of an inch of material each time. With the recess completed, all we need to do is true up the rim of the outside. We'll use the bowl gouge again and make cuts from right to left with the flute open to about 45 degrees. This should finish up about seven and a quarter inches in diameter. Now it's not necessary to cut all the way to the end. We'll remove this material later. And if you do cut to the end, it has a possibility of tearing off when you reach the end of the blank. The bottom of the base is now complete. Okay, so now we'll remove the blank from the screw.
Remove the screw center from the chuck. And install the blank, expanding the jaws of the chuck into the recess that we formed. It's running true. And I'm going to begin by removing the rest of this outside edge. I didn't do that earlier because I didn't want to split out the fibers as I neared the edge of the piece. But now I can use the same technique, cutting from right to left and matching the two diameters. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll actually just use that as a reference point for the dimensions, which is three quarters of an inch from the edge. Then half the thickness. which is just over a half an inch. This was five quarter material. Now I'm gonna place the rest parallel to the face of the piece. I'm gonna return to the square nose scraper, position the tool rest below center And just like creating the recess, I'm going to make pushing cuts with the handle parallel to the ways of the bed, pushing the tool straight in to create a square step. Cutting in this direction avoids contact with the end grain, makes for a smoother cut, it's much easier on the turner. Just make pushing cuts about an eighth of an inch wide. Until you reach your pencil lines. Now we can make another set of layout lines. We'll mark three sixteenths of an inch from the edge, three sixteenths of an inch from the shoulder, and three quarters of an inch from this edge. Transfer these all the way around. Now adjust your tool rest slightly below center. Return to the fingernail ground bowl gouge. Cut the cove between the pencil line here and the pencil line on the edge. Do so by leaving the flute turned over at about 45 degrees and swinging the handle. And probably one last cut here from pencil line to pencil line. Keep the handle of the gouge low. And we've created the cove. Now we can create the bead. from pencil line to corner. 
Again, we'll use the bowl gouge. We'll use the wing. The handle low. Swinging the handle and rolling the flute slightly. Rolling the flute allows you to work into tight areas like this corner we're working to. Swinging the handle produces the curve. And by rolling the flute over, should be able to work pretty close into this corner. If you find it extremely difficult to work in that corner with a bowl gouge, you can try using a spindle gouge. You'll want to keep the handle down very, very low. Keep the flute turned over and just make very light cuts. To work into the corner, you'll need to turn the flute on its side. You'll need to match the bevel of the spindle gouge with the curvature of this bead portion. Keep the handle low. Bring the handle closer to you slightly until it begins cutting. And then push the tool forward, swinging the handle slightly. Okay, the only thing that I've forgotten to do at this point is drill the hole for assembling this. So I'm going to mount a one inch Forstner bit into a drill chuck in the tailstock. It's a good idea to slow the RPMs of the lathe down when you're drilling. About 500 would be a good speed. And just drill to a depth of about 9 sixteenths. Good. At this point, the base is ready for finish, which I prefer to do off the lathe. To turn the spindle portion, begin with a block that's 2 by 2 by 5. Mark the center points and mount it between centers. Adjust your tool rest just slightly below center and parallel to the piece. Always rotate it by hand before you begin. And we'll start on a RPM, a little under 2,000. Use a spindle roughing gouge to make the blank round. Lay it on the back of the bevel and raise the handle. You can feel the piece along the back edge to see if you're round. Never get your fingers in between the piece and the tool rest. And once the piece is round, you can mark your critical dimensions. That's going to be the tenons on each end, a half inch long. Three eighths of an inch for the half bead at the bottom. Five eighths of an inch for the width of the cove and two fillets. a half inch to the highest point of the bead and five-eighths of an inch between the cove and step.
Mark all those points with a pencil, make them a little easier to see. Then use a parting tool to make the tenons on each end. These are gonna match the holes that we drilled in the base and the top, one inch diameter. Whenever possible, always begin by making parting cuts on the interior surface of wood instead of on the edge. Prevents the parting tool from skating to the side. Keeps your cut square. Just check your progress regularly with a pair of calipers. Perfect. Once you've established the diameter, then you can remove the rest, form the full half inch long tenon, and then do the same thing on the other side. With the tenons complete, we can make the rest of the parting cuts. The section at the bottom with the two fillets and cove. It's an inch and a half in diameter. Inch and a half. And complete that to the other pencil line. An inch and three quarters is the largest diameter of this section, centered right on that pencil line. Perfect. Then I'll just remark my pencil line, just eyeballed in the center. It's just a reference point there. Seven eighths diameter for the Smallest section at the top. And an inch and three eighths for the diameter at the very top. Now there's a little bit of extra material in these two areas. I'm gonna use the roughing gouge to remove that. Now it may seem like a lot of work to make a lot of parting cuts, but it actually simplifies things. Now every turning operation from this point on is point A to point B. We'll begin by the half bead at the bottom, using a spindle detail gouge. Just rolling the tool and raising the handle. Then the cove, it's made in two cuts, one from the left, one from the right, always down to the bottom and stopping. Now we'll shape this neck. This neck is just an elongated bead. 
It rolls into a cove. To do that, begin by rolling the tool over to form the bead. Then roll the flute back to flatten the shape out. Form the slender neck. Now form the other half of this bead. Rolling from the pencil line down to the corner at the fillet. It's important not to remove your pencil lines. They form a visual reference. And if you go just a little too far, you can always use your parting tool again. Reduce the diameter of the fillet slightly. And now create the cove at the top, just a half cove. So we only need to cut one side. Begin with the flute vertical, raise the handle, and then roll the flute open, raising the handle. And with the shape complete, just a little bit of final sanding, remove the tool rest, and for the spindle, since it's a small diameter, just a Small piece of sandpaper held against the wood does the trick. And once it's sanded, it's just a matter of gluing the base and the spindle together, routing the top and attaching that.